Okay, is it getting late? <clears throat> I haven't gone live in a while, but we're going to go live now and we'll see how this goes. I'm just wanting to document a lot more of my cooking stuff. Um, I know a lot of you are usually here for kitchen noodle stuff, but this is still noodles. It's just proving that I know how to cook. Um, <laughs> proving to no one that I know how to cook. I do know how to cook. But today we're making some Pansi Bihon and Canton, which is really exciting. I'm Filipino, so it's been a while since I've made some Filipino food. So I'm excited to get started. I'm making mostly a veggie one. I usually make a vegan version, but I was able to get some Chinese sausage at the store, so there's a little bit of protein in that. But if not, it's going to be super veggie packed super tasty stuff and I cannot wait to get started with cooking hoping to be done this within the hour so this is a super easy oh hello Jay I'm just like I haven't done a live thing in a long time so I'm just kind of practicing some things <laughs> I'm making punsy bihon and canton today which is fun so I'm making the fresh noodles here and I'm just gonna get started because your girl needs some food for the rest of the week, and this is going to definitely go far. So I was just setting up <laughs> my plans. I was like, if I get one viewer, I'll be happy. But I have you, which is even better because I actually know you. Um, I'm just getting everything ready here. I'm just checking out everything. Here we go. All of the things. Yeah. <laughs> so, ta -da. first things first, we're going to get some noodles, the bihon noodles. So it's made out of like beans, which is really good. Quick cooking needs a lot of liquid. Um, I also got Pansy Canton, which is an egg-based noodle, and these look crunchy. They're, they're a great noodle topping or something to put on top, but um, when you cook it and mix it with other the things that have a lot of liquid, it softens up and it tastes so good. I love mixing the two noodles. Um, it's the best way to make pancit in my opinion. Then of course I got cabbage, I got onions, one whole head of garlic. You've got some Chinese celery, which is um, something I forgot to pick up yesterday. Um, again, meat is totally optional. A lot of people use a mix of chicken, a little bit of pork. Sometimes they use shrimp. Lemon for garnish. I'm gonna use eggs and some Chinese sausage. I'm gonna saute. I have some bok choy, which isn't super common, but I have to use up some leftover things. And then either snow peas or snap peas, which today I'm gonna to be using snow peas because that's just like what I grew up with. So I'm gonna get started with some things because I wanna get some stuff on the stove as soon as possible. And I'm actually gonna make this a little bit differently um, just because I find like the last couple times I made it, by keeping all the vegetables in the wok, and you, yes, you should be using a wok for this, um, the noodles got, the vegetables got like a little bit soggy, so I'm gonna actually gonna kind of flash fry um, the veg and then remove it so it's, it stays nice and crisp and tender, because we don't want a soggy veggie or a soggy anything for that matter, so. So yeah, and then maybe I'll go live on my phone too. I'm trying to, get, <laughs> I'm trying to go live on a few different platforms. I'm trying to get it set up. I actually might buy a laptop that's dedicated to streaming, just because like I do a bunch of other work on this laptop, as you might know, and it's just very slow. But I do miss going live, and I also feel like I don't know. I'm a very talkative person, and I like talking to myself, so I find that to be. <laughs> kind of fun um but yeah I wonder if it's helpful if I maybe move the camera down because who really needs to see my face right so maybe I'll show you like this so I'm just cutting up one onion here and I'm just gonna be dicing this up doesn't have to be pretty I mean this is regular everyday cooking I'm not trying to impress an audience or anything like that it's just trying to get it all done but maybe I'll also go live on my phone too. When was the last time I did that? Okay. Let's try. Let's try. Since I got all things in here. It's 
the whole setup. There's a whole setup. I have a whole gooseneck thing going on here. I think it'd be fun. Say something about being live, which is great. And who doesn't love multi-streaming? Right, am I right? Let's just keep talking to ourselves, shall we? Now live. Oh, there's me. I just got a notification that I am live on Instagram. Okay, or on Instagram, on YouTube. So, oh, let's not contact Siri. Oh. Let's try this again. I do love this gooseneck thing. It's pretty awesome. Let's do this. Okay, let's do it. Oh, this is a perfect view. Okay, let's do this. I'm doing a couple things, but let's maybe angle it down more. Let's see if the connection is good, because of course the connection sucks, and we're kind of screwed. Oh, I am live. Okay, cool. I'm going to try to see, because I know YouTube is usually like a dime and a dozen, unless my subscribers are tuning in, which is awesome. So I've got the whole setup here. I'm just trying to make use of my time better. we got Daniel. We've got the Lego Smash. Axis, Molly Coleman, hello. We're making some noodles here, peoples. Um, I'm gonna try to say hello to everyone. Jesus Christ, so many people online. Um, I'm also live on YouTube right now, so I'm just trying to cook some things. I'm making Filipino food today. Um, I'm trying to get more practice before I start launching another platform. So, hi, Danny, how are you? We're cooking some Filipino food today. I'm Filipino Chinese, for those who don't know. And I haven't, I am embarrassed that I don't cook enough Filipino food. Having a Persian husband, I'm so hungry. Yes, come over, please come over. It's going to be a big batch. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, we're making noodles. So if you don't know what um, pancit is, it is Filipino noodles. So I'm making kenton, which is like these wonderful egg noodles. And also these bean thread noodles here. And I'm making mainly a veggie version. But yeah, I am adding a little bit of meat because I am trying to just make a big batch that both my husband and I will be eating. And he's a big meat eater. So that is that. But how's everyone doing today? Hello, Baconator604. Hells yes. I haven't seen your handle in a long time. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. I hear you. How have you been, Lisa? It's been a minute. Okay, so I got my really, really crappily diced onions, but whatever. I'm just at home, so it's not like I'm cooking for any people, although I am cooking for all of y'all. But yeah, so it's just one onion here. And who doesn't love noodles, right? Like this, you can easily multiply this by a lot. Hi, Austin. You could definitely batch cook this as well. So if you want like a ton more food, you can totally do that. Or if you want just something small for yourself, I mean, not recommended because you will be going back for seconds and thirds and fourths. Um, it's, yeah, highly recommend that you make a lot. It's been a minute. Yes, and thank you so much, Michael. I'm doing a live cooking stream. We also need to go live together as well. No, don't have to go live, but you, Emily, and I also need to have a virtual dinner. Everyone say hello to Michael. He's always from Halifax. Not sure if you wanted that information shared, but there you go. Ash, meet, hello. I should do um, a live pole dancing class sometime, hey? Getting my laptop covered in garlic. Um, so right now I'm making noodles. I'm making pancit, canton, and bihan. Two different types of noodles. It's my one of my favorite noodle dishes, Filipino style. Ragavori, hello, I'm waving at you. Come say hello. So I'm gonna get on the other head of garlic here. I'm gonna be mincing this up. If you have the jar of stuff, good for you, even better. I do not, I have a thing of like, maybe I just like doing cutting garlic. I don't know, like the extra labor kind of therapeutic. Jay Sunstone is also live here on Instagram and is also watching on YouTube. I love it. 
I'm here for it. <laughs> Maybe this is a better view. Jay, let me know if this is a better view for you. So yeah, I'm just getting everything cut. I also forget like whenever your live stream, it's also like, I'm also a lot slower. We got goalie, goal dad, goalie dad. What kind of goalie though? What kind of sport do you play? Um, what's going on? So yeah, just getting his garlic ready. Should have just shaken this in the bag, but it's, it's too late. <laughs> We're already here. Happy Monday, people. I am trying to make some life choices. Oh, yes. Okay, good. That's what I thought. Because you got like the aerial view. The other one's on my laptop. Got to give a little bit of varied views. But also, I feel like my camera on my... Remy, hello. I'm making Filipino food. You want me to bring you some on Wednesday? I am making Filipino food. I'm making Hansik Bihon and Canton, um, which is a mixed type of Filipino noodle, which is super addictive. If anyone wants some, let me know. But your girl is going to have a very busy work week. Holly, hello. How are you feeling, girl? Yeah, I'm also trying to do more live cooking streams on potentially Twitch or Kick, which is a brand new beta, brand new live streaming service. I am starting to stream more naked style. Um, Again, just now that I'm home for a little bit and going to be home for the summer, which is really exciting, um, I am going to be going on live. Obviously, they're not really interested in cooking over there, although I have done some cooking streams, but it's hard to go private. <laughs> so, and obviously, like, my biggest love is food. So, I just really need to make this happen for me. Yes! Daniel, I feel like you would definitely love Twitch, especially like you like playing video games and stuff. Um, Twitch is really good. It's becoming really saturated. But again, um, if you are OG people, you would know that I was between going live on Twitch or starting a YouTube channel three years ago. And I, I went through the YouTube route, which taught me a lot of things. Um, but now I feel like I might be ready to do more live things. Um, YouTube for me is like making videos. They live up there. They're going to be there forever. It's great. That's mainly for my instant noodle obsession, which is a thing. Um, but I really like love cooking things and I don't always want to be cooking noodles. Top Tales, hello. How are you, friend? How are you? Long time. I'm doing some cooking. I'm going back to my roots, doing all the things with food. Because who doesn't love food? And food really brings people together. And also, it's just something you have to do. We got Puyan in the house. We got Kevin Peterson. Hello. We're making some food. Puyan, this one here is a gluten-free and vegan dish that I'm not making for you guys when you guys come over. But it is good. But I am adding a thing of meat to it because, you know, sure. He loves his meat. So, anyways, I got a head of garlic here. I'm going to be chopping this up. I wonder what my YouTube people are going to be saying. Like, what, who is she talking to? YouTube people, if you're still watching, you're still with me, I am streaming also on my Instagram. Which if you have, are not following me on Instagram yet, it's these slurps, but I'm here streaming on my personal account. Um, Federica, hello. Stream sense clothing. Yes, nudes. <laughs> yes, Lawrence, hello. Yes, I am on streaming if you ever want to see naked. Um, that is where you go for that stuff. So, but, and I'm hoping if I get this done in time, I will be streaming right after this before I have to go to the pole studio and actually teach people in person and have a dance. So, Nika, oh my gosh, long time to see Death Dan. Some OG people that used to come to my old live streams. Well, look at you all. Isn't it a nice big reunion? We just need like Breeze Martin in the house and like all the other old folks that used to come to my live streams back in like 2019. Anyways, I'm doing a really bad rough chop here, but like, whatever. I'm eating this domino and this is what's happening. Don't come at me. <laughs> I am just a hobby chef and it clearly shows. Um, we've got Social Senshi. Hello, how's everyone doing? Everyone is slacking off on a Monday, or what's going on here? I'm trying to make this my full-time job. <laughs> no, but I am taking some time down from 
one of my in-person, my only in-person gigs, so I can do more fun stuff like this because it's fun. Okay, so now we have um, we have onion, one onion, one whole head of garlic, and we're gonna go saute on the stove. I have some um, pork fat. I'm gonna use up. I made some carnitas a long time ago, but you can use oil. Bad case for Mondays, or a good case for the Mondays because you're here with me. And we're gonna have fun making all the things. So I got this stuff aside. I do wanna prep a couple more things because as you know, if you are ever doing anything in a walk, things go fast. Tara, hello, look at me go. This is a what I call a PG-13 stream um because before i met you i actually used to do a lot of live live streams on instagram many 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 years ago before they changed their algorithm and then no one ever came to my thing so yeah <laughs> this is what's happening and i'm hoping to i'm trying to branch off a little bit as well into vanilla stream worlds um which is one of my goals this year as well because i also like doing vanilla shit but i also like getting paid for it so one day, and I think I have a little bit of a personality, but who knows? That might just be me. We got mink coats. I love mink. I love coats. I love them. Um, <laughs> because clothes. But alternatively, I do have a streaming platform where I do not like clothes called streaming. So come follow me on there. See you on camera. Um, right now, I'm just peeling this jumbo carrot I love these things like I don't know whoever needs a carrot this big but for like when you need a lot of carrot I, I love it for that reason I'm gonna be julienning this um, I'm also gonna get some Chinese celery here regular celery totally works as well but this is cheaper um, and then I never know what to do with the whole like three more things of like celery I'm gonna be using so this is half of a cabbage I'm going to be using a quarter of it because cabbage bolts down a lot. I have a lot of vegetables in here. Um, but I want to get all the ones that I'm going to be using immediately um, in my stir fry, at least for the initial part. Um, and I'm going to try maybe a different version of things this time, kind of switching up the recipe a little bit. If you have a mandolin, you're welcome to also julienne these. But I also do these for it by hand because when I'm julienning harder vegetables like carrots, and things like that, that mandolin that I have, which is Ben Reiner, is a little bit sketchy. And I really don't feel like cutting off my fingers today. I just am not, maybe tomorrow, like <laughs> I'm not really into it. So I'm just gonna be slicing this into julienne. So if you don't know what julienne means, you're basically cutting these into matchsticks, as you can see, just like this. Okay, let's moving carrots okay let's not cut ourselves on camera haha -ha. so we're doing this like so i've seen other people cut um their carrot for the pun seat um just by rounds and that's totally fine i think aesthetically for me i always like the julienne but again up to you depending on like how you like your things laura hello thank you so much laura so good to see you Laura, shout out from YouTube, one of my lovely YouTube subscribers, who's always so enthusiastic for all the noodles that I get. This is a surprise stream that I never even advertised. Um, but I'm, anytime I cook noodles, I'm gonna try to go uh, on a live because why not? I just, I just love it. I don't know. I just like to have fun and talk to myself because no one talks back to me. Um, <laughs> that's a lie. No, I don't. I can't always catch all the cat things going on in chat, but that's okay. I have a small following right now, which means one person is commenting every ten minutes. So, but who's all watching on Instagram right now? I see some folks, but I actually don't know how to see who's active because I'm on a mobile device. Um, but if you're still watching, go holler, say hello. Give you a little shouty shout, shouty shout out. Um, but yeah, so we're just julienning this. In the sink, I have some bok choy that is not really traditional, but again, you can kind of put it whatever you want in it. Um, we got Josh, we got, oh my God, Kudis, all the way from Greece. Hello, Danny. Yes, are you gonna learn how to cook after this? Cause maybe I'll do some Persian streams. 
I made I made sherbet a bunch of like food. Where when did I do this? Last week we did like some pan fried kubi day. We did um we did tachin. So that could be a fun stream. That would be a long stream because as you may or may not know, you might see your mom cooking in the kitchen for a long time because Persian food does take a minute. But there is some downtime. A lot of it's just like waiting around and cooking things for a long time. Yes. Danny, why don't you come li live stream with me? Or I can do a live stream from the house next time. Red, hello. Yes, you should. Honestly, your mom would be super, super, super excited if you start cooking in the kitchen. And you never know. Maybe you'll even cook better than your mom. Jay Sensei, four people on Instagram and one person on YouTube. But those numbers are always delayed. Yes, they are. Oh, yes. I know, right? Yes. I mean, I don't... I, sh I never advertise stuff like this. I'm just like, let's be spontaneous. But maybe I'm just going to try to be smarter and also um, <laughs> maybe advertise it next time. We'll see. But yeah, those numbers are always delayed, I find. Always, de always delayed. And maybe I'll publish this on Instagram. Who knows? If not, you can find it on, on YouTube. It automatically does get published by the end of it. And maybe I'll take some clips out of that. And you guys can see. But in the meantime, we're almost done. Julia Ning is... I mean, when I used to go live on Instagram, OG days, I used to kind of pre-cut, pre-prep everything, um, which would make the live pretty fast. But of course, with the talking and everything engaging, it always slows things down by at least half an hour to an hour. But I'm going to try my best to be quick and stay focused and on top of things because your girl has things to do, like making money on StreamAid after this, and also choreographing two routines that I got to do tonight. <laughs> so anyways, we got some Julian Carrot here. I'm going to maybe try to separate this out. I should have done that earlier, but alas, we are here. Um, if you're new to cooking Filipino food, you can kind of um, always expect there to be at least one head of onion and one head of garlic in like each dish. Ah, chopping is the most monotonous. Yes, monotonous part of cooking. It can be for sure. I find it to be pretty like um relaxing in a way, especially when I'm not talking to people, but I'm like in my own zone listening to a podcast of some sort. But yes, oh my gosh. I have a mandolin too, but I'm too scared to use it with carrots or anything hard. Like I'll go as like hard as zucchinis, and that's pretty much it. Toro888, long time no see. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm gonna put this all in another bowl. And because um, you're gonna be cutting everything, and this is just goes for any kind of cooking, you should be cutting everything so it's around the same size and it's all cooked evenly. The last thing you want is something huge. Chris, all the way from Toko. What's going on? I am overdue for an Asia trip, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Be a Rexosaurus. Hello. Um, thank you for listening because I would not bring the show if it wasn't for people like you and for all your support. And also shout out to Jace Hunter for also tuning in. Uh, oh my gosh. Laura, thank you so much. I try. I do a lot of things. I wonder like what my husband thinks sometimes. He's just like, who is she talking to? She must really love the sound of her voice because she does a lot of things with her voice, like a podcast and YouTube and being live and doing all things. Um, I actually don't like the sound of my voice. I actually, no, it's okay. But you know, you feel weird sometimes and you're just like, ah, I don't, I sound, I want to listen to myself. I sound weird. But anyways, that's just me. So I have some cabbage that has been eaten because apparently... Sherman went to eat some cabbage. We've had a couple days, and this cabbage is getting a little bit old, so that's why I need to use everything up. This is a great, um, any kind of stir fry or Filipino food like that has veggie in it. Really great way to use up old veg. Okay, so what I mean by that is that I'm just gonna cut this here. Just gonna do a, maybe like a little bit less than one quarter. Um, it's a really good way of using up leftovers. Um, ah, <laughs> yes. Does anyone know what the sound of my voice? And he thinks I have like two different voices as in I have my podcasting voice, which sounds similar to this. And he's like, you sound so professional. 
And I'm just like, I don't know. And I have my normal voice where I'm mumbling more than half the time. So must be nice to say husband. I know. Thank you so much. And we got Malik Lee. Thank you so much for the congrats, guys. I really appreciate that. For those of you who don't know, I just got married. Um, just a couple weeks. Oh, okay. Now it's a few more weeks. It's almost been a month since I've been married. So that's been exciting. GSAV Chen, hello. Or Anya, hello. Um, yeah, it has been a minute. It's been a minute, a minute. And as cliche as it sounds, it really was a perfect day. And I couldn't have asked for a better day, a better wedding party, better vendors. Like, everyone's just amazing. Weather was great. I still need to post those photos, too. Um, YouTube people, if you're ever interested, you can look at my personal Instagram. It's all open. Um, but I did have noodles at my wedding, which was awesome because, I mean, it's not a Steph Sia wedding without noodles. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? Okay, cool. I want to see if I can start um, maybe getting some things out of here. I still gotta wash a couple things. Maybe I'll move this. Yeah, it's like really exciting. <laughs> really exciting. Um, I do want to start sauteing this. However, I do want to finish some of my other stuff, like maybe rinsing this a little bit, and maybe we'll move this down over here. Thank you. Yes, it was awesome. We had a instant noodle bar, which was just very much us. Um, definitely me. Also, she gets her noodles. So, I'm just moving this over because I'm just gonna be washing some veg and kind of cutting the tips off and stuff as well. Um, I'm gonna move this here and this here. Yes, so I am just Jessica Volpe. Hello. Yes, I'm gonna. Need, oh, shoot. Now my YouTube's getting cut off with my giant gooseneck phone um, that's happening over here. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'm gonna try to do this more often. And I might have more time on my hands. Okay, so now I'm going to be rinsing and cleaning some things. This is also a thing that people should also know. I love random vegetables everywhere. Um, yeah, but like once you start cooking, it's actually pretty quick. So the biggest part is, is um, just chopping. As Brad was saying, it is, can be very monotonous for some people. And I find that a lot of people don't like cooking because of how monotonous it can be. However, for myself, I find it to be pretty, like, why can't I find the words right now? But it's very calming for me. Uh, cathartic, cathartic is the word I'm looking for. Um, I find it to be very cathartic, that's just me. That's a lot of degree of me. But, so in here, again, lots of vegetables because I'm trying to be healthy. Noreen, hello, all from the Philippines. Philippines are bad because I make Filipino food today. I'm making plenty of canton and pan. Um, so in here, I am using snow peas because that's something I always had plenty of canton with. So snow peas are the flat ones. Snap peas you can also use as well. Um, they're a bit more puffed up and they're nice and sweet. I also have to get this end here. If you're watching here, this kind of open end and bend it off so you can kind of oh that was a really bad example but to peel off the membrane um there you go that's a little better peel off the membrane because and i don't know if it's a filipino thing but um my parents also said that this membrane part is not easily digest digestible so you'll have to take that off and cooking is very therapeutic for me yes laura from reaching Yes, cooking is very therapeutic for me. Um, I know when something is deeply wrong with me when I don't even feel like cooking. And that's usually at a point where I'm getting too tired. I'm usually burnt out by that point. This is a great, great example here of you pulling the membrane away. Um, and you can kind of keep these whole. You can kind of cut them in half. Um, Since you like to slice them, I might cut them in half for just the size of everything. But yeah, I know something is deeply wrong when I am not wanting to cook. Cook, bake, anything to do with food. If there, if I always have an appetite. I'm always hungry all the time. Charlotte Stone, hello. Um, we're making noodles today. <laughs> but yeah, like um, times where I've been depressed, I have definitely had no 
well to cook. I have not had an appetite to eat much, but just something like that's a really wrong. If you know me on any various channels from a YouTube podcast or whatever, food is kind of like a big deal for me. <laughs> not only do we need food to live, but also like the life's too short for crappy food. All right. <laughs> Life is too short for crappy food. So um, I try to make the best kind of food um, as much as I can and also introduce people um, to different cuisines, to new foods, even myself, especially like during COVID-19 where we couldn't travel and do stuff. I was using cookbooks and YouTube channels and cooking as a way to travel, virtually travel in, in certain capacities to learn about different cultures because I no longer had, well, not just me, but <laughs> no one had the ability to travel during that time. So um, travel is another thing that is really big for me. And uh, if you're from a YouTube channel, you'll know that I travel a lot and try to get noodles from every single country because that's just funny and also hilarious. Um, and also I'm, I'm curious to see what they have out there because noodles exist in like every single culture. Let's be real. So yeah, but traveling is another big thing for me. Um, you just learn so much. It's just the best school in life is travel, in my opinion. Also a huge privilege for me to be saying that too, because not everyone has the means to travel. Um, some people are just not interested in travel, which I find bizarre, but um, to each their own. I also forgot like what, if there's a time limit on Instagram, was it an hour? I, it's just been so long since I've streamed. So right now I'm just, again, boring monotonous things, but have to be done because I did not do it earlier. It's just getting all the veggies ready. I want to start getting on the stove maybe by 2.30. And then the cooking process, it should be done by 3, which is going to be leaving me some enough time to go hop on streaming before I go teach at the studio tonight. So, yeah. And what's prompting me to cook today is that I am dancing at the club all week long, so I will not have time to cook until Wednesday. But I need to eat some food, and I, I really try hard not to cheeky show, hello. I try hard not to order takeout when I don't have to, unless I feel like incredibly lazy because I'm human, or if I just like don't want to eat the food that I've cooked, which is also a very human thing because I love cooking, but sometimes I'm just like, I want someone else to cook for me. So yeah. So right now we're just going ahead doing all the boring stuff, peeling the membrane off because it can make your stomach not feel too good or it's just longer to digest, but why do we want to put ourselves through that? And again, if someone actually knows the answer to this, cause, ah, oh, thank you, food porn. Oh, hell yeah. I actually, I always joke, cause on my Twitter, I'm very active on Twitter as well. I post more food porn than actual porn, which is actually very true. <laughs> I'm just like, um, people follow me for food. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Rocks are Katie. Rocky, hello. Welcome to my stream. We're making some Filipino canton and Bihan noodles. Canton is a big yellow noodle uh, that softens up quite messy. And mix. And then Bihan is a type of bean thread noodle, which can be made from a lot of different things. You can make bean thread noodles from... Uh, different types of beans, like mung bean, you can also make it from different vegetables like potatoes, um, potato starch, not potato starch, right? Um, you can make it from like sweet potatoes, like uh, you might get that from dangmyeon, which is a type of Korean noodle. There's um, yeah, mung bean noodles, green bean noodles, basically thread noodles is what it is. So we call it bihan in Filipino, in Tagalog. So yeah, almost done with these guys, and after I gotta wash these guys, because that's another thing too. I am definitely talking food porn. <laughs> Aaron, hello. We have another food porn person in the room that's entered on my Instagram. Aaron, who's also a big food nerd, which I'm here for. Um, Aaron, weren't you just making a mead from scratch? Mead, which is like an ancient honey wine. Ancient because it started off in those olden days, but maybe Erin can tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> yes, now, Laura, yes, I'm all about the food porn. I'm all about food porn. Who doesn't love beautiful food? I mean, the food has to taste good. <laughs> food has to definitely taste good. Um, I am definitely not about food that just looks good and then you taste it like bland AF. And you're like, what's going on? Especially when you go to a restaurant and you're just like, 
has certain expectations and then it just it's just sad. And I'm like, no. Yes. Mead, a recipe from 1390, I was gonna say 1930, by from some English monks. Amazing. I saw that that dish that you had with the beer. What was that about? And what was in it? Yes, mead. They maximized the flavorings, which at, at the time just handfuls of herbs. Yeah, they were foragers back then. Is anyone here a forager? Because I would love to pick your brain because I would also like to forage food or at least take a class um, just because I'm really interested in that. But anyways, so we've got these ones done. Our snow peas are finished. They're falling in my sink. Um, but those ones are all done with the membrane off. We got DJ Roman J. Hello. Um, I also have some baby bok choy which is not so typical, um, at least in my versions of Quincy that I've had growing up. But I, again, like, don't let that knock you. Like, if you want to put that in there and you got vegetables to use up, this is a great way to use it. So right now, I have a bowl of cold water, and I am making sure that I'm opening up all the pieces of bok choy, all the leaves, and rinsing it. Because a lot of the dirt can actually get caught up in these little crevices. Uh, you can't see, but maybe you can see here on Instagram, there's dirt in there. Here on YouTube, there's dirt in the middle. So you want to make sure you take it off. Okay, we're still getting educated from Aaron. So hard, hard tack with English naval rations that let them send sailors at sea for months at a time. Kind of breaks your teeth. Oh my gosh. Okay, so like, is that like a bread or something like that? Or like, describe that because I'm also curious. And when is the next dinner like this? It sounds like fun. Also, congratulations to Aaron. Uh, Aaron also got married in the beautiful Ourobora, which is amazing. Palo Alto, oh my God, long time, no see. All the OG people are coming out today. They're all slacking off at work, right? <laughs> so again, I'm just making sure that I'm going through each and every piece of these baby bok choy. And I like baby because um, I like to get these in all all into kind of like one or two bites. I find with like large uh, Shanghai style bok choy, it's just like too large for me. And I'm not gonna be using all this bok choy. Um, I am gonna be throwing some in some mock wonton soup that I'm also making. Curtis Look Photography, hello. Yeah, so I'm almost gonna be done with this. And of course, all the dirt and sediment's gonna sink to the bottom of here. So once you're done with that, you can kind of Put this in your colander. I'll probably cut them in half later um, because, again, cooking faster. So last thing I want to do, and I promise I'm almost done the prep, is using my Chinese celery right here. We got agar and we got cool L C L G eighty one. This is Chinese celery, and they're thinner as you can see, and they got much more of the stalk and the leaves here. Um, bok choy. Bok choy is a funny word. Not to mention all the different types of choys out there. There's like sweet choy, there's other type of choys, and lots of funny things. <laughs> that definitely sounds funny and cute. Hi, Asher. What's going on? So again, with this, they can with celery as well. You really want to go ahead and separate, open these up. And luckily for tiny celery, you don't have a lot of that closure. But the ends will always be filled with dirt. So I am going to be um, just rinsing through that and also rinsing lightly through the leaves too. Because sometimes, depending on your grocery store, there can be a lot of dirt filled up. So just trying to be as thorough as possible because the last thing you want is grit in pinchy, pinche julie, 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 julie. Taking her to study. What are you studying? I'm making Kunsi, Kanton, and Beton today. So yeah. I don't know if you can see, but there's the water is brown, which is gross. So that's gonna go all in here. And can get a bit of a rinse, making sure there's no more dirt. And then we can finally start cooking after this. Oh yeah, you are doing your mortar mortar broker course. Good for you. How much longer do you have to go? So in this case, I'm gonna put this here because I didn't plan for enough space here. I am once again gonna be moving all the stuff. Yeah, I can definitely save you some if you want to come by on Wednesday. Actually Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday best and tomorrow is extremely busy. But come come by on Wednesday, I'm around. 
Okay, so I'm gonna re-move this again. We're gonna start the actual cooking process, which is like exciting. Oh my God, July 21, yes. Yes, Daniel, we're doing the cooking part now. So I'm just gonna reposition my goose snack in here and I'll have, um, do you guys care to see my face or should I just do um, an angle thing down, which is also gonna make me really nervous? Yeah, I'm making banana bread too if you want some banana bread. Do you guys care to see my face? If not, then I will be right here. <laughs> um, I'm trying to give you a bit of a view, but I'm also nervous to put this over, but I have that before. Um, maybe I'll try to go back a bit more. There, how's this? We'll do a little happy medium of walk and myself. And then for YouTube, thank you, Laura, for the feedback. I need to do more of these live streams, hey? Maybe I should do a live stream with a noodle hack. <laughs> thing as well. Maybe I'll have to do that. Um, I wonder if I can put this here. Would that be problematic? That's kind of okay. As long as this place doesn't get too hot and my laptop doesn't die. Walk the way. Yes, walk. You definitely want to get a walk for this because um, there is going to be quite a lot of vegetables that we're going to be using up here. So let's get started with some things. So I'm going to get my walk. If you have a gas burner, that's best but there's so many houses that just don't do gas anymore so i'm unfortunately i'm unfortunately using my electric stove i'm putting the the heat on to about a medium high and then we are going to get some of your neutral cooking oil or you can get um like what i'm doing some leftover pork fat from things that i made we got sub six six seven hello in the house in the meantime, I'm um, also going to be adding some honey sausage. But yes, Azure, if you want some banana bread, I'm going to be making banana bread. I'm making like three loaves on Wednesday. So if you want to come by, you want to bring some home for the kids, that's totally fine. So this one here, if you've never had Chinese sausage, and yes, this is mainly a vegan recipe, um, but I am going to add just some Chinese sausage in here as well because I have it on hand and I should just really utilize the things I have on hand instead of like hoarding everything. So yes, anytime I would say by Wednesday afternoon should be okay. And yes, I, have, I make a really, really good banana bread as well. I do like an almond butter, vegan banana bread, gypsy spirit soul, hello Kirby. Um, so my wok is heating. You wanna get some nice heat over here. Uh, in the meantime, other things we can do. We can actually cut that sausage up right now. So I'm just going to use a couple. So if you ever had Chinese sausage, it's very different than other types of sausage. They are cured. They're a little bit sweet. This is what they look like. They like somehow last forever. Like, I don't know. We used to grow up with this stuff a lot when I was in my childhood house. I think you use like four. But yeah, I mean, they are sweeter for sure. Um, but not like sweet sweet. I would say they're cured. Uh, we have Mary Rose here. Hello, Mary Rose. I'm coming to Toronto in November. So hopefully you'll be around. I'm going to slice this on a diagonal. You can mince it, whatever you want. If you want to use pork, you could use chicken here as well. Um, shrimp. Again, just saute those until um, they're all good to go. You can remove that from the pan, like what we're going to be doing very shortly. And... We shall get started. I'm gonna go ahead and then add my neutral oil to the wok. Again, you want a nice flaming hot wok. Very important. Um, same thing with any kind of cooking. You wanna make sure everything's heated up nicely. Fashion Network 888. 888, that's very lucky in Chinese culture. So I'm almost done chopping these. So and I'm just slicing them on the diagonal. But again, completely optional if you want to use these. If not, it's like not a big deal. I've done many different vegetarian ones, uh, vegan ones as well. So it's all good. Once we get some good heat on the wok, I'm just going to add in your choice of fat. Again, neutral oil is totally fine. I'm just using this leftover carnitas fat lot of it so that's gonna go ahead right in the sink we've got my sister here i'm making pun seed canton and bihot if you want them though um 
we got Motley Girls. Hello. Why can't I say hello? Okay. There. So yeah. Um, let me adjust my YouTube camera here. So just like so. Yeah. So I'm giving it a bit of a whirl over here. And you want to make sure that you are circulating the walk so you get as much surface area covered in that fat. Okay, so we got sea biking here. Yeah, sure. If not, I'm available on Wednesday. So right now, because I'm going to be just kind of pre-cooking a couple things, we're going to start off with our tiny sausage. I'm just going to give that a bit of a stir, and then we're going to remove that later as well. Okay. I like to always get like a nice um, spatula, something that is um, what silicone. Leftovers is yes, leftovers are the best. Bye. Um, leftovers are the best because especially when you repurpose it, just use it up. I'm a big fan of repurposing things, especially if it's like a dish or a meal or something. You just really want to, I hate wasting, especially there's so much food waste that happens in the world. And I am just not here for it. Um, I hate throwing money down the drain, especially when it comes to food, especially nowadays when um, groceries are hella expensive. <laughs> they are hella expensive. Uh, it's not fun for anybody out there right now. And I can just imagine all the people that are starving. So I try to use as much as I can. Um as long as it's still fresh, <laughs> fresh-ish. I mean, whatever. Expiry dates, what are they even? I mean, you should, <laughs> I always use expiry dates as like a guideline, that's just me. So I also have some other things going on here. I have some dried shiitake mushrooms that I almost forgot that I reconstituted. We're, um, they're dry and they're usually about like a package about like 10 or $11. And you just pour hot boiling water on it, making sure it's fully submerged, covering it, and then you can go ahead, it'll be nice and soft, and you can slice that however you like. I also have to save some of the broth, especially, but not the gritty part, because there can be dirt in it, but it makes for a great base in terms of, uh, in terms of adding a nice umami and flavor profile to things, especially when they're vegan or vegetarian, you get a really nice deep umami flavor in there. We got Ryan in the house. Ryan Ellison, hello. So I'm hearing a bit of a sizzle now with my Chinese sausage. These don't need a lot of time for cooking, um, especially if we are gonna be adding them back into the bowl later on, into the bowl, into the wok. So this can kind of, uh, we can kind of take that part out. We are then gonna add in our carrots because they're harder. I've already mixed in my cabbage in here. Cabbage doesn't take very long, but you know, I'm just cooking for home and I don't care that much. So. We are just going to go ahead and move that all together. So for now, hi, darling. I love being greedy like that. Hello, darling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove our chani sausage. So you can just put this in another container. Um, we still got the residual oil that's in the pan. My sausage is falling out everywhere. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and add in our carrot and our cabbage. And I'm taking a technique. Um, Nice. Yeah, shiitake. Yes. Hells yes. Yeah, exactly. It's just so like, oh, shoot. We got some stuff. Some garlic falling down on the floor. Uh, the way that I'm going to be cooking this pancake, because like, if you missed the beginning part, Henry Bishop, hello. Um, the beginning part of my show, I was seeing that sometimes when you cook the vegetables all together in pancit, the vegetables tend to get mushy a little bit. I keep dipping my elbow in garlic. Um, they tend to get mushy, so I'm actually gonna just try to do a quick little saute and then um, removing that afterwards. So, Chinese sausage falling everywhere. I'm trying to make this as clean as possible, it's not working. So I got cabbage, we got some julienne carrot in here. They spilled oil from the sausage as well as um, the oil that he used earlier. If you need more, you'll add more. Jeez, dog, him. Hello. So here, all of the technique is going from under, pulling over. Under, pulling over. 
sorry. And you want to keep doing that until everything is, I have a rough cut here there. You want to do that until everything is coated in that oil. Again, if you need more oil, you're welcome to add that. It's not a big deal. So because these vegetables are harder, it's going to take just a couple more minutes um, than other ones. But, so I'm going to use that time to cut a little bit of this Chinese celery that's over here and it's been hanging out for a while. So I've been leaving that to drain. I'm going to be cutting off the ends that are really soppy and usually have a bunch of dirt. I'm just going to do myself a favor and take that out. Any dirt pieces, you could also take that out as well. But I tend to have a ton of dirt in it, which is what I don't like. And I am going to go ahead and slice this up. They're nice and small, which is great. And don't forget to use the leaves of your celery. I know I'm using tiny celery now, but it definitely has a lot more leaves. But don't forget to use your tiny celery. Um, oh, YouTube, yes. I wish there was a smelling <laughs> smelling option here that you can smell all the yummy things I'm cooking. Uh, looks delicious. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, I was saying, don't forget to use the leaves of your celery because there's so much flavor in that. And if you're not really into that, that's okay. So I'm just, hello, hello. I miss taking your classes, girl. Um, you're welcome to even save the leaves if you're not really big into eating those. You can use that and save it for uh, any kind of soup. And it provides so much flavor. So, so, so much flavor, okay? So don't forget that. And right now I'm just doing a really rough chop on that tiny celery, I always find that celery uh, in intensity is actually a pretty big flavor. Uh, pretty mandatory, in my opinion, because again, that's something that I grew up with with that same kind of flavor profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that celery to our hot walk here. We've got Scotty Cruz, hello. Scotty, if you ever need more dancers for your events, you let me know, because your girl can dance. <laughs> Um, yeah. So again, scooping from underneath and over, underneath, over, underneath, and over. And if you're like, that's already a lot of vegetables, you're correct. Um, it is a lot of vegetables, but I like to have a lot of vegetables. More veg than noodles, in my opinion, but that's just me. I always try to make vegetables and everything, but as long as it like makes sense. So yeah. Seeing that to cook for a minute. And of course, with cabbage and fish and these type of veg, too, the celery releases a lot of water. So just be aware of that. But maybe I'll just use the rest of the celery because I don't know what else to do with it. I also like that in soup as well. But I'm not making any kind of soup like that, like Vietnamese style, anytime. So again, I'm just going to be adding this in. So. Just like that. I also have my bok choy as well as the silkies. Which bok choy I'm going to go ahead and cut in two. But again, I want to be able to use some of this up because it's starting to go bad a little bit. And the rest I'm going to save for this like mock wonton soup that I'm going to do with the rest of my bok choy. We've got Pak Kuk Wannabe. Are you Kuk? Do you want to be my Kuk? <laughs> oh, kind of I've had that offer a lot of Anyways, cutting these baby bok choys in half, any kind of like random leaves, I'm also going to throw in there as well. I'm going to save some of these larger ones for my soup. And then, yeah, I feel like, yes, that'll be good. Again, trying to be as healthy as possible. And again, you want a nice big walk because there's going to be a, a lot of things going on in here after this. It's nice and whole. Put those cooked pretty quickly. Put the bok choy where it came from. We're going to put this back right here. Ooh. We're going to have one last little turn in here. And again, don't worry about the veggies I just put in here. Once it's all cooked and covering, it will wilt down. And that goes for anything that you cook, of course. 
meats and all that, they all cook down, right? So I'm just gonna leave, like let this be over here for a second. I just wanna make sure the snow peas and those bok choys are gonna be incorporated with that heat. Thank you so much, Azure. Yeah, so it's a lot of veg. I actually don't know how this all can fit. But that's okay, because we don't need to put them all in just yet. Because when you stir it up later, it's gonna it's gonna be a minute. So for now, we're just gonna let this chill out for a minute. I always have a walk, like a cover for my walk over here, just to help that veg kind of wilt down a little bit, but we still wanna try, try to retain that crunch as much as we can. So while that's kind of cooking down and wilting, we're gonna go ahead and remember those stocky mushrooms? I haven't forgot about them, um, but I am gonna go ahead and slice those julienne. So just like the carrots that we did, we're also just gonna be slicing that, add like a nice meaty texture in there without it being super meaty. Also adds a lot of flavor. This isn't super traditional either. I didn't really grow up with this, but um, I love shiitakes and they're great. And I like to sneak them into things when and if possible. But you really wanna make sure that they're soaked well. Um, sometimes the stem tends to, tends to not get rehydrated or reconstituted nicely. So just make sure you do that because no one wants to be biting into a hard shiitake mushroom. Um, some people like, like to remove the stems as well. I sometimes do that, but these ones are all nice and soft. So I'm gonna open this one last time. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my rehydrated shiitake. I lost one. Five second rule, a little bit. I'm clean, I promise. So I'm put that back in. And I only use about five because it's flavor for dried shiitake versus, versus um, fresh is actually quite strong. So I would start off with a little bit rather than a lot. I find sometimes dry shiitake flavor is very overpowering. So just be aware of that. So again, making sure you're scooping from underneath and making sure that everything is distributed nicely. There's tons of veg in here. I still don't know how all these needles are gonna fit. This is more veg than I usually do, especially with those bok chais. Um, for now, and one more last thing I wanna show you. This is the shiitake liquid here that's been soaking with those mushrooms here. So the nice brown color, No, not much dirt, but there's a little bit of dirt at the end. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of that later on. But let's put that to the side. If you do have stock, even better. I don't have any stock on me right now. Sad face, but So giving our bowl one last rinse, I'm gonna go ahead and now remove this slightly cooked veg here. So I still wanna re retain some crunch and we also need some space to cook our noodles. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer all these kind of like lightly cooked veg to a giant mixing bowl. So again, just to recap, if you're just joining, um, we're making Pansi Kenton and Bihan, making mainly a veggie version, a really jam-packed veggie version, making a lot because I have um, a very packed week and the next time I can cook is Wednesday, and we're gonna run out of food tomorrow. I have other Filipino food in, in the fridge, which is delicious, but it's, it's gonna last us for lunch, and that's pretty much it. And I'm like back to back with meetings tomorrow. Um, it's just really busy. So I'm just trying to be responsible and do a little meal prep. Why I didn't do this on Sunday, I actually don't really, I mean, I like cooking on Sundays if it's in the daytime, but it was Father's Day yesterday, so I had to take my dad out. And then by the time we came home, it was like 9.30 and I had to do other work, so. So yeah. So now, as you can see, all of that liquid, all of that fat has now evaporated, which means we are gonna have to add a bit more oil um, or a fat component of your choice in there, because we're gonna have to saute our onions and our garlic, which is a very, very vital part in any kind of Filipino cooking. Um, Filipino cooking, again, if you're just joining, relies a lot 
on garlic and onion. And we use a lot, like when I say a lot, like a head. A head of garlic is like minimum. Sometimes two heads if you want to go really garlicky. 